All right, everybody, welcome to Virtual Bourbon. My name is Steve Akeley, and we are going to be doing a tasting today of some unique whiskeys, for sure. So we've got uh, Freeland Spirits Bourbon, which uh, I've heard a lot of good things about them. I hadn't had the opportunity to try it, and I still haven't. I'm going to be enjoying this or tasting it for the first time with you guys, so that should be fun. But uh, I've kind of followed their journey a little bit and look forward to, uh, to getting um, that one for the, for the first time and trying it. Uh, the next one is one that I have tried. It's the only one that I've tried, uh, and I'll tell you guys a little bit about the story of them in just a minute, uh, but Broken Barrel, they have a Mizanara cast finish one, and uh, they had me go through a flight, and that was the one that I liked best out of their, their bunch, so they gave me a bottle, so I wanted to provide that to you guys to see if you liked it as well. And then the uh, other one is, I don't know, it's a little bit kind of a, a unicorn, maybe one that you can find, though, not, not terrible, but uh, the Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel. So that was released, I don't know, six weeks ago or something like that. Uh, I can't say I've sit, seen it sitting around on shelves, so I think it kind of has come and gone, but uh, you may be able to find some of it out there. And I've heard kind of mixed reviews about it. Some people said it was really good. Some people said it didn't live up to expectations. Toasted Barrel is kind of a big thing these days. So people do have a lot of uh, ability to measure it against other ones. So we'll, we'll talk about what we think about this. And again, that's another one I haven't tried yet. I've, I've like I said, had it since we, we've uh, secured that. I actually bought two bottles. Uh, one for this group and then one for myself. But I thought, oh, I'll wait till the, the, the group does this thing before I try mine just so I can have the fun of experiencing it with you guys. So we do have uh, three today. So, uh, and I did save the bottles just to show you because you may or may not be familiar with these brands. Uh, Freeland Spirits, uh, this is a female owned company and they're out in the Pacific Northwest. I think Washington is where they're at. On, actually, I'm wrong, Oregon. So uh, Portland, Oregon, they're out of. Uh, and their bottle is just awesome. So all their bottles look like this, kind of this teardrop look. And uh, I don't know if you guys can see it or not because it's in the bottle, but there's a, a woman on the front holding a, a grain. Uh, so she's got a, a wheat or a rye there. I'm not uh, that good at farming. But, uh, so all, but all their products come like this. So whether you get uh, their rye or their gins and all that, they have this sort of neat look, uh, colored glass, that depending on what you're getting, depends on what color it is. So um, I don't know, it's a, it's a cool packaging for sure. So it's a female owned company and I, the, the main players there are all females as well. So they have like their marketing social media person, female, and then they have their master distiller, also a, a female master distiller and uh, she's been on our shows before and things like that so uh, pretty exciting things that uh, that uh, they've got going on there seemingly and this one is going to come in at 92 proof just so you know that so this their bourbon comes in at 92 proof this is product that they've made so and it is three years old so it's actually is age stated on there, three years old. So uh, let's go ahead. If you haven't done so already, let's give this one a pour. And um, feel free to pour as much as you like, but save some because we like to go back and revisit them too. So we like to kind of go through when we're doing one of these tastings, we like to go through them twice. So kind of like to get the initial thoughts on it and then kind of start back at the beginning and go through it one more time. Because they do, they do evolve a little bit uh, as, you're, as you're going through them. So on this one again this is one that i have not sampled myself yet what do you guys think on the nose i think the nose smells pretty good i mean it's definitely got caramel to it vanilla for sure and what else you guys getting anything unusual? Those are kind of the classic taste you guys are sense. Do you guys get Maybe anything unusual? What's that? Maybe some toffee. Some toffee, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of hitting all those marks. Christy, what do you think? Is it kind of hitting those classic standards or are you getting anything unusual there? I'm getting something a little bit different than what you guys are getting, okay. um, but not too different. So people are saying like, toffee and such um i'm getting more of a like a light maple okay and i'm actually getting plum off of it like a plum. red plum okay i'm kind of getting that uh like dehydrated trail mix type fruit okay so like a yeah like a dried fruit type of like the dried raisins or like dried mm -hmm. apricots kind of right okay 
Gotcha. All right, let's give it a taste and see what we think on, on the palate, what we're getting here. Yeah, I think that's definitely pretty interesting. Um, sweet as can be right up front, but also spicy starts right away. So uh, for me, I got the sweet immediately, but just right behind it, uh, uh, kind of spice across the palate. How about you guys? Are you getting some of the spice as well? Yeah, definitely a lot of spice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know if it's a, a high rye? I do not. I don't know what the mash bill is. But, there's nothing on here that indicates it. There's actually pretty, pretty minimal uh, amount of anything on here, just the, the very basics, because that's the only label on there. The rest is just glass. Um, what what are the, a bit of honey, I think, is kind of what I'm getting on taste-wise on, on that up front. Um, I'm getting kind of like the hot cereal. Hot cereal? Mm. And then it's kind of thick at first, but then it just quickly disappears. Mm-hmm. I get that spice. I also get, but I do get some of those, uh, the nosing of the, the caramel or the toffee or whatever you want to say, but it kind of tastes a little toasted. I don't know, again, that it's coming from the rye in there, but to me, it has a toasted caramel type of taste to it. If that's a thing. How about you guys? All right, I'm going to ask. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Some taste of cocoa. Cocoa, yeah. That's a good one. I can see that. Um, their website, the mash bill, says it's 70% corn, 20 rye, and 10 malted barley. Okay, there you go. Makes sense. Makes sense for, uh, for the spiciness there. Now we, we know for sure, as we suspected. McNew, I, I, I'm going to put you on the spot here because McNew is going to be taking over this series. So it's something new at the ABV Network. Uh, she's working side by side with me on three of them, right, McNew? And then, uh, yes. and this is being the first of three. And then yep. th this series you'll be taking over and leading by yourself without me, uh, starting in February. So, what yep. what are you what are you getting? I know you've been working a lot on sensory stuff and all that. Yeah, I've been trying. So I definitely agree with you that it was kind of honey up front. And then mm -hmm. spicy, like it's a lot of spice and I'm trying to decide if it's like a cinnamon spice or red pepper spice. And I try to figure out the difference in it. Yeah, it, it to me tastes a little bit more on the savory spice side. So uh, red or black pepper or something like that. Yeah, like definitely I think more peppery than cinnamon. Yeah, yeah. Because cinnamon is very spicy, but it's also kind of a s sweet spicy. Mm hmm. Well, we think of it as sweet, but in right. like Indian dishes, it's spicy. But yeah, or in your skyline chili. Oh, God. <laughs> the best chili. It's not the best chili. <laughs> I am not a Cincinnati native. <laughs> I left. <laughs> that stuff is gross. Thank you. No, it's not, Danny. Stop I didn't it. understand Cincinnati food. <laughs> Stop it. What, what else uh, on the taste on this one? So I kind of get like a like the aftertaste to me is kind of like a Brazil nut. Okay. I could see that. And that's like a little bit of that or maybe applesauce. Applesauce. Yeah, th it, there's like something going on with the yeast there in the finish actually. Yeah, the finish goes back to like, it's sweet again, but like a thick sweetness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, um, not very warming, I'll say that, but it's 92 proof. I don't know, that's you know, well, above average, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I kind of, I'd like to see it more at uh, at least a hundred, but 92 is where we're at. Um, Everything about this is really subtle. I wonder if it'd get a little bigger if it uh, aerated some, if it sat out for a bit. Mm -hmm. We'll come back to it. And we are going to come back to it. So we'll, we'll, we'll kind of test it out to some degree. So make sure, like I said, you don't drink all of it. Uh, save some because we like to go through, like I said, around the horn twice with these when we're doing them because it will evolve a little bit. So it's a good point, though, Bob, for sure.
Excellent. All right. Let's move on to our next one, Broken Barrel. So this one is kind of fascinating, actually. Um, let me show you the bottle. The bottle's cool. So the bottle, I mean, there's kind of a standard shape bottle. And the, the, it's got some, some nice, you know, kind of, I don't know, old school text on the front. But then it's because it's the Mizunara cast finish, they have an artist that they utilize. And, uh, of course, this is Japanese influenced with uh, being in that uh, secondary finish. Uh, and it's not really a secondary finish. It's, it's wrong to say that. Um, when, what, what they do with the Broken Barrel is, that's the name of the company. They, they don't put it in a secondary barrel. They put it in the... the original barrel but they have staves so they break a barrel down and put staves in there now when you talk to them they think it's the most unique uh, process ever and they're the only ones doing it but i mean in reality makers mark does the same thing on a huge scale with their private select program but um so this one comes and those Mizunara casks you're seeing more more of finishes with that so that's that's kind of becoming a thing so japanese whiskey but the interesting thing to me is this is not a bourbon uh, it's not, it's, it's corn whiskey and it's two types of corn whiskey blended together. And then with that finishing process of bringing those staves in and, and, and putting them out to, to round it out. So, and uh, of course they are, they source their product. So it's corn whiskey from Indiana. And I guess that could be from a couple of places. I don't actually know. Uh, I mean, I don't think MGP is big into sourcing corn whiskey. Maybe, I mean, I guess they make everything, but uh, so some from, from Indiana and then also from Kentucky, corn whiskey from Kentucky. And I know where they got that, uh, but I'll, I'll share that in just a second. So this one comes in at 100 proof. Um, it's the highest proof that we're going to be drinking tonight, but because it's a little bit lighter whiskey, I decided to do this one second and even and the Elijah Craig third, even though it's a, a little bit higher proof, but it, it looked, again, I haven't tried it, but it looks like a little bit heavier whiskey. So um, let's get this one, uh, uh, let's nose this one and see what we think here. Like I said, um, interesting company. The company's based out of California. Like I said, they source everything. They don't, they don't distill anything themselves. They're also big into, uh, whiskey is kind of not their, their specialty. I don't, you may have seen them before. They, they do vodkas and maybe some brandies with like whole pieces of fruit in the bottle. So if you see a, a peach vodka and actually has a whole peach in there, um, you know, I don't know exactly how they do that, but, uh, but, somehow some way they get a whole peach into a bottle which it doesn't look like it would fit but it, it, so so that's that company and now they're into the whiskey thing as well um they are uh based out of, out of california as i mentioned but they they are growing so they decided to open up a secondary office and they opened up in st louis because the guy who is like the number two person in the company is from east side i think he's from Alton, Illinois, or something like that. So he's in the greater St. Louis metro area. And they've got an office uh, downtown St. Louis, which is kind of cool. It has a, the guy actually lives there. So it's a small, they bought the whole building. Uh, so it's a small building off of like Washington Street. Uh, also not far from where we do like the, uh, the learning conference when we do that, when mm, we're working yeah. our corporate job. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's a real neat place because the first floor is, uh, is a business and then the second floor is like I said, residential. Uh, but it's got a, just a real nice bar in there and then it's got some storage where they store some product. And then, uh, and then like I said, he lives there at this point. So it's kind of interesting that, uh, that they've, selected to do that but they ultimately moved in at the worst time possible i think they signed the lease in february of of this year and uh, you know with big plans to have all these events and things like that because they've got this nice bar it's in a cool area of town it's uh cool um uh really neat it's already decorated and everything it was just like a turnkey place but of course well, we all know what happened uh you know by the time they moved in there uh you know we're there COVID and lockdowns and they really haven't been able to do anything there so it's very unfortunate and uh, they're, they're struggling to, to hang on and hopefully at some point we get past all this stuff and they can thrive. But this is, like I said, I tried their entire lineup. This is the one I like best. So let's give this one a, a nose. Hair jumps out. What, what jumps out? I'm sorry. Pear. The fruit, pear. Oh, pear. Oh, gotcha. Pear. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's, I remember this being... Yeah, kind of almost like pear juice, really. I mean, if you take a, a deep, it's definitely, it's definitely, uh, 
smells like like pear. That's a good good call. Or maybe maybe some some apple in there too. But unique honey says Randy. That's good. Okay, let's give it a, a taste again. I think they're going to break out into a Christmas song there. It felt like the <laughs> dog's Christmas song one. Um, again, uh, I'm heavy on the fruit taste to this one. Yeah, yeah but it's also got nuts. Mm -hmm. Tasting nuts. Nuts. Okay. Any specific thing from the nut family? No. Okay. Um, but yeah, a pear or apple, I mean, there's definitely that. It, it has a nice lingering uh, warmth to it. it. It does spice up a little bit, which is nice. Um, overall, pretty good. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't guess this is corn whiskey, to be honest with you. And that's, it's 100% corn whiskey. It's a blend of two corn whiskeys, but that's, that's what's in there. Minerals. All right. <laughs> no, I get that like a mineral water. Like if you like Topa Chico, mm -hmm. kind of get that. Okay. It uh, it definitely has a viscous feel in your mouth too, so it's good. But Steve, I also do get the nut part also, but. Uh... It's more like I've just freshly cracked a pecan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I that's, that, it's, that's interesting, right? I will say this. This surprised me that I liked it because their Kentucky provider oh. is OZ Tyler. OZ Tyler. So, but it's not OZ Tyler bourbon. I don't know what their process is for corn whiskey. Corn whiskey is a different animal anyway, because you have to age it in a used barrel. Uh, you don't age corn whiskey in uh, an unused barrel. It would be bourbon. I mean, you know, you can have 100% um, corn bourbon. So um, it has to be. So it's, it's taken, you know, things from different things than, than the typical uh, OZ Tyler. So, uh, but... That's probably, I didn't know at the time. I didn't know until I got the, they, they just poured them out for me. I didn't know what was what, but now that I've got the bottle, I can see it's just corn whiskey. So I, it was the one that I liked best out of all of the things that they poured for me. So. Yeah, having a little inventory of German fruit schnapps that you can't buy here. Mm -hmm. it, it definitely has a fruit, like a pear type taste to it. So, I mean, it, to me, it tastes very similar to some of the stuff I have in my, sorry, under the bar right now <laughs> <laughs> that I can't share. <laughs> all right. We're, yeah, next one of these is at Al's house. So we'll, we'll yeah. <laughs> Al's got all the secret stuff there, huh? Okay. He was holding out on me. Yeah. I haven't been back in a year or so. So my inventory is diminishing. Travel has been somewhat difficult. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's for sure. I don't know. What do you guys think of that one? Do you guys like that one? I like it. I do too. I, I do too. So Nice variety. You know, something different. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's kind of what this series is about. We will come back and revisit that one too. So, but uh, for now we're going to move on to our third and final one. Again, first trip around the horn. Yeah. And before, Steve, before you leave that one too, like, I don't know if anybody else got this too, but I was getting like um, on the nose of it. I did get what someone mentioned about the, the freshly cracked open pecan, um, a little bit of that pear, but I was also getting a floral note. Okay. Um, almost like a honeysuckle and some brown sugar in there. Okay. It's really like subtle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a light, easy drinker. hundred proof seems to be the right proof for that particular whiskey. I, I feel, I mean, it, it's good. It's, it's, it's good. All right. Next up the uh, Elijah Craig toasted barrel. Again, this was uh, released this year, new product for them. Uh, again, toasted barrel is, is definitely hit the radar. So, um, yeah, this one, this one is, uh, 
you know, deep caramel bomb. I mean, that's wow, really caramel. Yeah, oh, there's a lot on there. Great color. Yeah, color's good. Smells like a little dusty. It does smell a little bit like a dusty. Uh, I was going to say that too. So that's a good point. So when you drink those older whiskeys, you get kind of a little musty taste to it, which not in a bad way. There's, there's something uh, musty never, that doesn't, I don't know if it's a great descriptor, but there's something that's unique about that older whiskey. And this has a little bit of that on the nose for sure. So. You know what the age is? Uh, it's like all the Elijah Craig stuff. It's non age stated. You know, they went away from that when they took the 12 year off. Uh, this is 94 proof. We do know that, but if it's like the rest of them, I, and I assume it's every bit of that, the regular Elijah Craig is, you know, uh, seven years old, something like that, eight years old at this point. Uh, and then you've got the extra finishing process, which is probably, I don't know how long they're, they're doing that secondary finish uh, in the toasted barrel, but I would guess you're talking another six months probably. So that would give it that darker color that we see than, than the other two, obviously. Let's give it a taste. Like I said, reactions have been mixed on it. Let's see what we think. It also smells like a rickhouse. Like a rickhouse. That's not a bad smell. No. You're not going to offend me by saying that. Yeah, that's pretty good. It, um, Danny and I were um, at Wood Hat Spirits this past week and we were having some honey and it had pieces of char in it. And it has, it's kind of a char taste to the whiskey too. It has, it has a little bit of that going on there the same sort of a taste that you get with that which again i'm to me that's not a bad not a bad taste what other things are you guys getting on the, on the chocolate. chocolate yeah yeah, yeah. whoever said it smells like a dusty like that musty smell like that's what it tastes like to me mm -hmm. and i expected it to be sweeter than that but <laughs> yeah I'm getting uh, like a leather note in there you know, after kind of that initial sweetness with the caramel and vanilla, mm -hmm. then kind of getting that leather, leathery. Yeah, I can, I can definitely, I'm there with you. I, I get that one too. Yeah, the nose transforms as it opens up a little bit because it starts off like French toast and then it completely goes away on that sweet note and you get more of that leather note coming forward. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, another spicy one, kind of upper palate for me. I don't know where you guys. Uh, I like the nose better than the palate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By a lot. Yeah, the nose is fantastic with that. Yeah, and I think the finish is kind mm -hmm. of like tobacco. Like my mouth tastes like after I smoke a cigar. Mm -hmm. Like. Yeah, which is okay. That night, the next morning, yes, not, not, so morning not, not so great. much. That's why I avoid cigars. I, I yeah. hate the way my mouth tastes the next day. It feels horrible. Yeah. yeah. Not never great. You can't brush your teeth enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. I Mine feels like dark chocolate. Yeah, it's like residue after eating a, a couple of pieces of really mm. dark chocolate, bitter chocolate. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, I get tannins. Tannins. Tannins at the end. Mm-hmm. I feel to Al's point, this would be a good pairing with dark chocolate. Uh -huh. This would go very well with, with that. Dark chocolate espresso beans. Sorry, I can't share. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Whitlatch, what are you thinking on this one? I love the nose. I'm going to spend more time with my nose in the glass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's the old uh, the old trick too. You see people like Jason Bronner and I don't know. There's others too that you see that are really into whiskey and they finish the glass and then they just keep the empty glass because that that on a strong full bodied one like this, you smell that glass empty glass an hour later and it smells so great. So there's definitely something there. 
So you'll see like if you go to Bourbon's Bistro, Jason Bronner's bar in Louisville, uh, you might see him walking around with an empty glass sometimes sniffing it. And that's what he's doing. You know, if he had little drops of water, mm -hmm. um, it opens up the nose and I, I'm getting like a, a fruit, like an apple or something like that. Okay. I will, uh, I will try that on the second round through just to keep it like this because I poured all mine in here. Mr. Russo, what do you think on this one? I've had this before. I actually found a bottle of it, and uh, I wasn't impressed with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like this for a little bit more, maybe because I had the first crack of my bottle and I haven't gone back to it. But, uh, yeah, I get a lot of oak, a lot of tannins, like leathery tannins. And now that you brought it up, the bitterness from, like, a dark chocolate, like, I think that goes hand in hand with the, the tannic, like, leather flavor mm -hmm. that I get. But not – not too impressed with it for being a limited release yet, no. but yeah. Yeah. One that you got to work to get. So like I said, I happen right. to be at the right place in the right time. Um, I called McNew that day because they had that Eric church one there and she was like, eh, it's okay. I wish I would have got one. I see people selling it for crazy amounts. They, it, they put, they put this out and Eric church out the same day. He, yeah. he just won entertainer of the year last night. You should have got one. <laughs> I, I blame you McNew. Yeah. You've downplayed it. Huh? No, I didn't. You sent me a picture like you wanted to get me one, and I said that I had one. <laughs> and you're like, it's, I was it's, confused it's, about the. It's like the it's just okay. It's okay. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Well, I'll pass on that. Well, I really liked mine, but. <laughs> Ridiculous. Let's see how she is. <laughs> Danny, what do you think? This is one you tried before too, right? I, I think I remember you telling me you tried this one. Yes, I did. Okay, and go on. For me, it seems like. Uh, what they did, it was like a Star Wars episode where that you keep kind of going backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how else to, to describe it. I mean, if they would have brought this out earlier, yeah, I, I mean, it would have been great. But to me, it's kind of disappointing. Disappointing. Okay. Same thoughts going through tonight like you had when you drank the bottle you bought exactly okay danny's not changing folks mm -hmm. all right any anything else on this one before we start round two here okay we will come back to it we'll see what a little time on that one does and let's go back to our uh freeland spirits Smells different on the nose, for sure. A little uh, light campfire. Let's see what we got on the taste on this. I get a nose of candy now. Candy, yeah. The nose for me now. Smells like pancakes. Pancakes. Oh yeah, like pancakes with like really good maple syrup. That's yeah. that maple I was talking yeah. about. Like it's overwhelming mm -hmm. sweetness now. Yeah. Yeah, like a butterscotch maple, like super sweet nose. That's what I'm yeah. taking. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. We didn't do anything to this whiskey. We just let it sit there for, I don't know, 15 minutes or whatever we've been talking since we came back to that one. The uh, nose the second time around for me, it, it uh, almost took me back to walking through the county fair where you smell the uh, funnel cakes and uh, yeah yeah county fair yeah, if like, we were naming the bottle uh, you know when you do with a barrel say we're doing a barrel pick and this is what we're trying that the county fair would be a cool name for this one That's yeah like I'm Steve saying. you also said that campfire it's like fried sugar so the county yeah. fair is perfect <laughs> yeah yeah because that's what I was getting a little a little you know. And that you're right, though, the, the fried sugar, yeah. Wouldn't hurt my feelings to have a candle that smells like that. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. It's good. It, uh, very limited uh, distribution at this point for these guys, though. So, 
but you can get it online. So that's where I got it. So, and I, but I forget what retailer, but you can, you can find it and they do ship. So yeah, there's, I mean, I don't know. It's like you, it's like pancakes with syrup, but you can also sometimes when you nose it, you get like almost like the pancake batter too. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. It's good. Or even, um, yeah. It like finishes that. differently for me right now mm -hmm. than it did before. Yeah. You know, like, like a waffle cone, you know, when you go to those ice cream shops where they're making the waffle cones, it's kind of like that too. It kind of yeah. has like a, almost like a marmalade taste to mm -hmm. it now. Yeah. Yeah. It's no longer spicy for me like it was the first time around. Yeah. They need to have that instructions on there. Open it, pour, mm -hmm. walk away, come back. Exactly. <laughs> it's really good. It's really good. Second round. I would say that one definitely improved. Yes. Yeah. Coming around the horn. So that's good. Yeah. Yes, I, I would be a buyer on this one. So that's, you know, when you get to something like this, would you buy, would you not? Uh, it's it's not bad priced. I think it's $40-ish, which, you know, craft bourbon these days, that's not bad. That's in the wheelhouse. Uh, that's nothing wrong with that price. So, uh, yeah, I would I would definitely do that. So I am a, I'm a buyer when they get to expanded distribution for sure. It's good. Any other thoughts on that one before we close that one down? All right. Next, we're going to move back to the uh, the Broken Barrel uh, Mizanara cask finish. Also, different. The nose on this one smells like potpourri. Potpourri? Mm -hmm. I'm getting more of a, like a, I don't know, what are some of the, not the Cracker Jack, but what's the other one, the little bit fancier one, the caramel type of corn? Poppycock? Yeah. Fiddle some, faddle. Yeah, Fiddle Faddle, Poppycock, one of, one of those. Not, not like, cra Cracker Jack tends to be j just like dark caramel. This is more, more of that lighter caramel that you see on the, the fancier ones. I get the flowery. Flowery? Sorry. Yeah, I get the, the potpourri type. The potpourri? Yeah, it's like definitely full of like floral. Yeah. All right, let's taste this one again. <clears throat> Still getting the fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like pear or cider. Something. Something like that. Kind of apricot. Apricot, maybe? Okay. With the lightness and color, it doesn't look like it was aged very long. Probably not. I mean, well, part of that comes to, again, it goes back to it's corn whiskey, so it has to be aged per the government de uh, reg definition, has to be aged in a used barrel. So right away, a, a used barrel, you're going to get a lot less color to it uh, than, than you do, um, you know, a brand new barrel. So um, that's going to play into it. Um, and then the, the finish, it's finished with uh, that Mizanara cask with a had Japanese whiskey in it again used barrel i'm sure when uh probably used multiple times and then they break it apart put it in there so yeah light uh, again i don't know it's a it's an easy drinker for sure drinkable mm -hmm. yeah it's something i'd almost like throw into a sangria instead of a rum mm -hmm. like it's like a little summary for me i like it yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's light when I was in Germany, there was a a pear brandy. Yep. And that's what this is tasting like. That's what it's taking you back to. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. 
Mm -hmm. I, I added a couple of drops of water to it, and it seems like that adds a little more depth to the flavor with it. Okay. Getting more with uh, kind of those nuts uh, on the finish with the pecan and maybe even a little cashew in there, kind okay. of offsetting some of that mm -hmm. sweetness. Yeah, I would go along with that. Just added a couple drops of water. Yeah. On. Yeah, it definitely gives it uh, more on the nutty side. So, yeah, it's good. I, I like this one as well. A little bit more expensive. I think it's in the 60-ish range. But, again, not not bad for, for what it is. Uh, light, easy drinker. So, yeah. I would uh, I would drink that one for sure, and uh, yeah, especially if I could find it on sale, I'd be all over it. Anything else on uh, on the Broken Barrel? Okay, I would well, like I, to know who like the Indiana sourced is. Yeah, okay. but it, it could be a, a couple different options since it's the corn whiskey. Like, and maybe MGP does sell some. Of the, they're so big, they they probably do a little bit of everything. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like old 55 came to mind, but I don't know if he sources anything. Yeah. I mean, that would be a good, that would be a good choice. Uh, but I, yeah, I don't know if he's to the point where he's sourcing stuff or not, but I bet you those guys know if we ask Alan and Jason, one of them will know for sure. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's go back and revisit our Elijah Craig toasted barrel. A little bit of air on this one now. Solid on the nose. You got to give them credit on that. It's kind of buttery with the caramel. And, yeah, it's, it's... So the nose to me reminds me of um, around the holidays when you go into the mall and they have those uh, candied almonds. Uh huh. That's what it reminds me. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's good. All right, let's give this one a, a taste here. Then I do want to try adding some water and see what that does. Oh, that's different than the first time. Yeah. Yeah, the first time I got like the tobacco aftertaste, like Nick New said, but it's a lot sweeter now on the taste. Still getting a chocolate, but I'm also picking up like spice. Mm hmm. Spices. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have that lingering aftertaste like it did though, for yeah. China. So that's that's good. I will agree with the uh, spice on the back end. Uh, I mean, it does kind of hang there for a minute, but then disappears. Mm -hmm. Tastes a little bit. I I don't even know if they still make those, but when I was a kid, my mom would always get that. Uh, uh, Lifesavers pack for Christmas. I had to get one of those. And the ones when there was the butter rum, it tastes a little bit like that. Mm -hmm. well, Lifesaver butter rums. I don't even know if they still make the butter rums. But my mom would always confiscate those, by the way. So mm -hmm. I, I like the wild cherry ones anyway when I was a kid. So That's the best thing in the Christmas stocking. You had to have that packet. <laughs> Yeah, like six everybody got that right. It opened up like a story. It was like the sweet storybook. And yeah, you got two yeah. sides with uh, with that. And you got the peppermint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those are some those wax candies with sugar water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. My mom got that every year. I'm telling you, every year I got that. Put a little water in there. It. Uh, I'm not sure about that. It. If you try that. I added a couple of drops of water, and it didn't. Uh, it didn't yeah. thrill me. Yeah, um, me either. It feels like it dulled it a little bit. It did, didn't feel like it opened it up. It feels like it. it, it, it it's already thin enough already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think that, in my mind it didn't didn't help. It. Just kind of kind of 
took away some of the flavor. But. That's the reason why I compared it to a Star Wars episode. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't get it didn't get better. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. On the uh, uh, on our event last night, Danny showed us his hat that he keeps under the, the cake safe, so it doesn't get any dust. On it. He's ha- big into his Texas hat, so he has his hat he wears all the time. Then he has a spare that's kept under a cake safe, so it's protected. Oh. Very important. Yeah, very important. <laughs> very important. Next time you go to Steve's, you'll see the Mothman hat under something. Yes. Yeah, because I, I do I have a backup Mothman hat. <laughs> He's now. like, I'm gonna make fun of you. It's a good yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Danny's on to something. Danny's collection is going to be going up for sale, folks, on December 26th. Whoa. I talked with his wife. She said she wants him to have a good Christmas, so she's not going to put it up for sale till the day after Christmas. <laughs> she's in there she, on the couch laughing her ass. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't want to ruin your Christmas, Danny, but I, I heard that December 26th, it's all gone. So he had the thing. For those that don't come on these all the time, he his wife uh, decided she just wanted to help him out by taking an in- inventory of all of his whiskey. That's never a good thing, guys. Don't fall for that one. <laughs> so I know that, uh, yeah, his day of reckoning is coming because the, the, the final count was over 800 bottles. So, yeah, Danny's toast. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's a yeah. bottle. Yeah. I feel so bad now. <laughs> yeah, over 800 bottles. Yeah. Hey, old thing did. A dollar bottle. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not a few, Danny. Don't, you know, don't talk to Danny. It doesn't matter. He's just a, you know, he's low level in the, uh, Canard organization. Yeah, Miss, Miss Miss the one you got to talk to. <laughs> exactly. You'll be able to get some of that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this one is is definitely the disappointment of the bunch. It's not bad. It's not a bad whiskey, but right. it does have high, pretty lofty expectations because it's Elijah Craig. It's a special, you know, release, you know, it's not an everyday shelf item. It's something that was put out and then is like I said, gone now. Um, yeah, it just should be more based on what it should be and the pedigree it has mm-hmm. behind it. Uh, that's the disappointment. Not, not like, not like I said, not that it's bad whiskey. If, if someone would pour you this, I, I don't think you'd be like, Oh, I spit it out. Uh, but no. it's just, just doesn't live up to expectations. And I think the other two that you don't really know a whole lot about kind of elevated and went above what your expectations might be like, you know, one's a very young company, the other one's sourcing, um, you know, and I think they were both better than kind of at least the expectations for me in my mind. So. I will completely agree with that. Star Wars bourbon. (laughs) Star Wars bourbon. Yes. I I would pick just regular Elijah Craig over this. Yeah. 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 I would agree with that. Yeah, because it's you can find it and it's cheaper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has better flavor actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was gonna say yeah. I like it better. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's a big, big time, uh, big, big miss for for that. One. I was looking forward to this one, and, and not so much now. Yeah, well, yeah, when we went in, I thought it would be my favorite. It's not. Yeah, and definitely I'm glad I didn't buy a bottle. Yeah, Un- yeah. unfortunately, I bought three. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you're collecting. Hey, if anybody so, wants one, number twenty. So that's okay. She can she can sell those, but not the other one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Twenty five cents a bottle now. <laughs> Twenty five cents a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> We're hoping, deal. <laughs> we're hoping this is fire sale stuff. I'm hoping uh, Misty really wants to move it and it's priced accordingly. So, is there going to be a website to get online and? <laughs> 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 Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the good news is Randy, Danny's in St. Louis. So he's a St. Louis guy too. So we'll, we'll be able to just go pick that thing clean. So Steve, you know, you can make your garage headquarters for this. You can just move it over there. Yeah. yeah. You can get involved. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say I will let Misty use my garage like her store uh, for 10% of the bottles. So for 80 bottles, I'll, uh, I'll help. You <laughs> the assets. I thought this was a well, lot. Uh, <laughs> well, according to Papa Neely, uh, your garage is full. <laughs> yes, yes yeah he thinks Egly. so Egly, yeah <laughs> yeah he's telling people to rip off my garage so yeah that's where i keep all my good stuff it's not true mm-hmm. i don't I, is your garage heated and cool no yeah that's the thing I, I mean you know the garage gets so hot in the summertime the, the corks would pop you no one's keeping their stuff out there i'm not keeping any of my stuff out there i don't want the tops blown off of that so yeah 
All right. What, what else did you guys think on this one? What was uh, whose favorite was Broken Free, Barrel? Freeland Spirits, the first one. Freeland Spirits. Yeah, I really like that one. I did like that one too. Whose favorite that was was, was Broken Barrel, the second one? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty close to to being a tie, so that's good. Anybody's favorite, the Elijah Craig? You heard some criticism, but that doesn't mean you're what, what, if you like whatever you like. Um, and we can't tell you that you're wrong if you like it. That's how that stuff works. It, it, it's not bad. Yeah. Oh. So the first go round, it was one three two for me, mm -hmm. and then the second go around, it actually went in order. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I will, like I said, when it becomes available, Freelance Spirits will be definitely one that I want to check out. And I'll also look at their stuff. I'm not even sure what their product lineup is. I'll see if they've got uh, different products. Maybe we can try for these series or I don't know if they have a barrel strength or anything like that. I, I don't know that much about them, but I'll, I'll check out and see if we can get some other ones and try them, throw those in there. So especially for McNew. I give McNew an inventory list, company inventory yes. list. She gets yeah. to choose um, what she pulls from there. I also think they have a gin and I've heard really good things about their gin too. Yeah. So like I've been a gin hater until I've tried some craft gins and they do a really good job of not making pine cones. Yeah. McNew, you might, you might want to pick out uh, or we, we have to work together and get a couple good gins but maybe a gin and i'd i'd, I'd come on that event uh, just as a yeah. just um a, like new riff and a spirits of french our, lick for sure spirits of french lick. you know who else i, I would you, you should be in the mix is steve beams gin yeah Ooh, you know, he, yeah, he grows he grows this. most of those botanicals um, himself because he's a you know a botanist yes. and uh obviously um, it looks very cool and i do think we tried it uh, we did try it at our barrel pick and it was amazing but we drank a lot of other stuff that day too, so I don't yeah. know how it was. You know, another one, Steve, is uh, still six thirty. Still six thirty. Yeah. I was just getting ready to say that. Yeah, yeah if people were uh, into a gin event, I would do gin. Yeah, there's it's also Leopold's yeah. gin. <laughs> you know what we should do, McNew? You know how we're doing that bottom shelf bourbon thing? Yeah. Because we're bourbon drinkers and we're not that exposed to gin, we're not experts or anything like that. We should do like a blind mm -hmm. gin tasting and then bracket it out and then uh, and then see who wins you know uh put some of these Ooh. that people are recommending like all this group here is recommending and, and yeah. that like that okay kind of cool i'd be there yeah as long as it's not winter time i'm in <laughs> <laughs> danny, danny, danny drives a snowplow so he can't uh, uh yeah his, his ability so, to commit is yeah. not uh, not good so it looks like freeland spirits has a gin a geneva gin and a dry gin and then okay. they have their bourbon. Those okay. are the four products they have. That's all they've got right website. now. Okay. Okay. They have a rye that they've sold. That was a finished rye that they sold out of already. Okay. Oh wow! By Geneva, do they mean gin? Uh, Geneva? Geneva? Uh, like a Dutch gin? Because there's a difference. Um, it says, "Yeah, inspired by Geneva, the Dutch grandmother of gin." That makes sense. The Dutch grandma. So is, is is that a real piney gin or not? No, no it's, like not. A, it's like a bourbon drinker's gin. Okay. That's like yeah, if, if like you that don't, one's if, like more like botanicals in it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It says, yeah I love you, Neither. Yeah. The uh, aroma on their website says it's fresh, fresh baked bread, grain forward with botanical lift, and the taste is a rich layered rye and buckwheat with undertones of hazelnut, juniper, and spice. Oh. Sounds pretty cool. good. I try that. Mm -hmm. well, I, will, I will be honest with you. The first gin that I ever found that I liked was when I went and visited New Riff and they did their little barrel aged gin. Yeah. So, yeah, they're using of, a cone flower too up there. I'm going to New here. Riff uh, next week, so I'll see if they've got it. Uh, Justine's going to uh, Steve Beam's place. We'll have you pick up one of his gins while you're down there, Justine, so, so we yep. can get it. I could get one from Dayton Barrel Works. He owes me a Navy strength gin, so. <laughs> okay. He doesn't, they don't bottle it, but he owes it to me. They don't bottle it? Not Navy strength. He's got another type of gin. Okay. 
I just prefer it a little higher. Yeah, we uh, uh, that would be a fun thing to do, McNeil. We'll do a, a blind tasting. We'll get uh, six of them and try it. Thanks, uh, Wine tasting for bourbon fans. That's the key. We're bourbon fans. Uh, we're not changing to gin. This is a, you're not going to tune into the, the gin daily uh, on the. 80s. <laughs> uh, there's not enough there for me. But uh, but to get try something a little different, expand our horizons, like we've done a little bit with moonshine. Uh, I think that would be kind of cool to try some gin. Yeah. Gin fans certainly talk about it a lot. So. Um, That's like. Yeah, well and we know yeah. a gin expert, right, right, Rick? There's one that comes to Still 6.30 all the time. I don't, yeah, I, right. I don't know her name, but I, I mean, I know her. I, I do. I can't think of it now, but I but I was talking to her last Friday. But uh, Yeah, she's cool. She's cool. Yeah. She's all about gin, so we could bring well, her yeah, on. She likes, she likes the things that David does down there. Yeah. You know, yeah. like the, the gin that he developed for the last hotel. Um, he developed a gin for their signature Bloody Mary, and one of the... He froze up. He froze up. He was just getting ready to say something. Um, oh, he froze up. There. Back. there he is. He, he created a gin for a hotel that what was unique about for, it? For, for the last hotel for their signature Bloody Mary. And one of the botanicals that he used in it was uh, horseradish. Horseradish. Oh. Okay. Uh, That's yeah. an interesting botanical. Um, that would be really, great really, in a Bloody Mary. Oh, yeah. Really unique gin. Okay. Well, there, there's a guy in Kentucky that. Uh, creates a nice gin, per se, but it's dandelion wine. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. I tried to beat that this year yeah. in quarantine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's off the grid stuff there, yes. yes. <laughs> Danny, you're talking about this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the label on there? Where's the official label? Yeah, I, I don't think we can do that. Right. <laughs> That's the last time I drank gin in 1980. Stalin's. <laughs> we had a cake party, and our keg ran out while we were playing quarter bounce, and I stole my roommate's bottle of Tangeray gin oh. and continued to play quarter bounce. How'd that work out? Everybody threw up. So are you, are you far enough away from that? You can drink gin now to join this event if we do it, Bill, or not? Sure. Okay, that's good. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll give it a try. All right. Oh, how was the trip back from Vermont? You're here. It was a very long trip, 11, about 11 hours. Okay. And what do you think of tonight's whiskeys? I liked the Elijah Craig, actually. You I like the, the, the Elijah yeah, Craig? I, I, I like the toasted quality of it. I got, mm -hmm. Although I think the corn one is growing on me a little bit, the broken barrel. Yeah. I didn't like it. The, I didn't like the first sip very much, but by the end of it, I, I was kind of, kind of liking it. And I like the first one. You know, you just have to go in not thinking it's going to be a bourbon, and then it's okay. If then it's okay. It's bourbon, <laughs> yes. That's actually good advice. If you don't expect it, you can't be disappointed. It's, it's like hair. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Very cool. But yeah, I like them. I liked, it. but I did like the Elijah Craig. I thought I, I'm surprised that you guys didn't like it much. Yeah. I'm surprised too. I went in thinking it was going to be the very best. Yeah. I was excited when I got that bottle. I'll say that. Like I said, I yeah. bought two. So I was like. It's a beautiful yeah. color, too. Yeah. It just color. didn't. Yeah. I think I like the first one, the Freeland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I did too. That was a good, good drinker for sure. Yes. The first and second one are both pretty much tie, but. Sorry. Number three is all right. I'm yeah. not going to throw it out, but yeah, got two more <laughs> bottles that he's got to get through. So, yeah. You guys are really selling Four. it for people in the bottle. We'll take it off your hands. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's your first sale, Danny. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Misty's happy. I, I heard Misty in the background go, woohoo. <laughs> One sale made, 799 more to go. <laughs> 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 Hundred bottles of bourbon on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, well, we're doing an official event. So what I'm going to do now, um, the, we've gone through all of them. We've gone through twice. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recorder.
that doesn't mean I won't stick around. I'll stick around and answer any questions you've got, uh, anything like that. But for right now, for our audience that didn't get to participate tonight, we can say goodbye to them, and I'll turn off the recorder. Bye, guys. Bye.